Morning, everybody. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing great myself because the last video that I just uploaded on JTech TV is doing ridiculously well. Thank you all so much for the insane support on that video. But today, we're not here to talk about JTech. We're going to be taking a look at a different PlayStation fanboy who had an absolute mental breakdown after the developer direct was over. And I don't really think there's a way I can describe this in all honesty. You kind of just need to see it for yourself. So so yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Oh shit, what is going on guys? This is JWash412, and what the fuck did I tell you? What did I say? I knew from the get-go this show would be god-awful. This show would be a disappointment. This show would be a fucking travesty. This show would be fucking embarrassing. This show would be a disaster. And I was absolutely right. I don't know if you really are though, in all honesty. Cause look, Minecraft Legends, I don't know a single person who actually gives a damn about that game. So yeah, that part wasn't very good. I just tuned out for that part, in fact. And with the Elder Scrolls Online, I mean, yeah, it's nice that they're making all the DLC free, but that section wasn't really super interesting either. But the other three sections were actually pretty interesting, especially the section about Hi-Fi Rush, which spoiler alert, that's gonna be a big part of this video. And yes, I know everybody is entitled to their own opinion about how good or bad they think something was. But at the same time, I have every right to disagree with that opinion. The amount of people I'm seeing on social media and the Xbox community talking about how this show was a success is fucking sickening to me. Now before I get into all the problems, before I get into all the bullshit associated with the show, let's talk about the couple of positives. Imagine being so salty that people actually enjoyed something you didn't that you're saying it's sickening. Calm down, my guy. It really is not that big of a deal. But let's go ahead and hear about the positives of this show first. The first positive being, they finally got a release date for Redfall. Now Redfall does not look that good. Redfall was one of the only games I was excited for to come to Game Pass, to come to Xbox. But after looking at it more, I still don't know what the fuck the game's about. And if you ask me, this game's giving me serious games as a service vibes. I mean, my dude, it's very easy to tell what Redfall is all about. You can even go to the Xbox store and pre-install it, and there's a description of what the game is. The town of Redfall is overrun by vampires. The game is campaign only. It's not like there's online multiplayer or anything. And you can do online co-op with people. And from what we've seen so far, it looks like there's going to be a lot of different weapons. There's going to be skill trees and abilities and stuff. So yeah, it doesn't look like anything super special, but it doesn't look awful either. And also, I don't know where you're getting the whole, oh, this looks like a live service thing from. Because again, it's not like an online multiplayer thing like Call of Duty. The only multiplayer you can do is co-op in the campaign. I guarantee the only service they're going to be providing for this game is like DLC further down the line. Who knows? I could be completely wrong. It could end up being completely live service, but I don't know why that would be the case considering it's campaign only. But one more thing before we carry on. Notice how he said he was excited for this game to come to Game Pass because that's going to be very important in a few minutes. Redfall does not look that good to me. It doesn't look that fun to me, especially not for a single player game. It looks like, look like a game is only going to be fun if you're playing with your friends online. And there's also the fact that in Redfall, there is no co-op progression, meaning that if you play with your friend online, that only the main person, the host, only gets progression, and the person who's in the lobby, or three people in the lobby, do not get any progression in the main story. Now I know what you're going to say, but JWAGS, a lot of games do that when they're co-op. Yeah, but if this is your, one of your only fucking big games for the year, you would think that's one of the things you would fucking iron out. So let me get this straight. It's okay when other games don't have this, but when an Xbox game doesn't have it, it's not okay because it's an Xbox game and it's one of the games they're releasing during the year. I am so confused right now. But yeah, I am going to make that argument. No crap, other people who join you are not going to get the same progression. At least not in their own save slots. That wouldn't even make sense because imagine if one person was on like the final level or whatever, final boss. I don't know how the game's going to be structured. But yeah, imagine somebody's on like the final area and they have a friend join them who's on like one of the first areas. They beat the boss or whatever and then their friend 
friend goes back to their own personal save and then they've just beaten the game because they did it with their friend. That makes no sense. They're completely different save files. Or you could flip that on its head and look at it the other way. Imagine you have a guy who's towards the end of the game and he wants to play with a friend who's at the beginning of the game. And then when he's done playing with his friend who's at the beginning of the game, it overwrites his save file and he loses all that progress. Like that doesn't make any sense. Why would that be a thing? Look, there are valid criticisms to make about any game, but this really comes off as nitpicky and looking for something to complain about. Oh, I love trash. Redfall is not that game. Redfall is not the game that's gonna save Xbox. Redfall just isn't fucking it. Minecraft Legends, fucking trash. Even the Minecraft community, I do not think the Minecraft community, they like building shit. They do not want a Minecraft fucking RTS game. Oh, I love trash. I mean, I agree. I haven't really seen anybody who's actually excited for or who cares about Minecraft Legends. I'm assuming there's going to be some people commenting on this video saying, I'm excited for it. Well, good for you, my friend. But I think this guy is right on that point that not many people care about it. Although I don't really know why this was mentioned because this section of the video is supposed to be the positives about the direct and you just mentioned a negative thing. So I don't really know why this was put here, but whatever. Let's keep going. I cannot believe for the life of me that people were actually literally trying to fucking hype up Minecraft Legends when 99.9% .9 of you fucking dudes aren't even gonna fucking touch it. Now, a new Forza game. A new Forza game, it looks good, but guess what? It looks like Forza. It looks like the same shit we fucking played how many goddamn times now. And the crazy shit is, and the big L about the show, is they showed Forza, but no fucking release date. How, do, how the hell do you not have a release date for Forza, a game that we fucking know for sure will be coming and they gave us no release date? That's fucking concerning. I mean, the whole Forza not having a release date thing is kind of a double-edged sword in all honesty. Because there's two ways to look at it, and I'm honestly kind of torn on how I feel about it. Because on one hand, yeah, it is concerning that it's coming out this year and we still don't have the exact date. But at the same time, they're probably waiting until they know exactly when it's going to come out with no delays at all. So that way they don't announce it and then it gets pushed back and then people get disappointed, concerned, whatever. In fact, I put up a poll the other day asking people like, hey, would you rather a company put out a release date super early, but then end up having to delay it? Or would you rather them wait a really long time until like right before and then announce the release date? And it was like over 90% or something, I think, said they would rather the company just wait. But I think something else that's important to realize is they did say 2023. It's not like they said 2024 or like just didn't even put 2023. No, they said it's still coming out this year. We just don't have the exact date. So yes, I do understand people being concerned, but at the same time, I think they're waiting until they know it's going to be ready by the date so they don't have to delay it. At least I'm hoping. And Forza looks like the same thing. I mean, yeah, the core gameplay is still going to be the same, but what did they say? There's like over 500 cars and over like 800 accessories or something like that. They're adding new tire and fuel management, I think they said. And there's like five new areas in the world that they're expanding to. And this is especially ironic when you consider that this dude has a video on his channel saying that God of War Ragnarok is basically perfection, but you know, that game has a lot of similarities to 2018, but I guess that's not a problem, right? Because it's a Sony game. Elder Scrolls Online, who gives a fuck? I never hear anybody, anybody talking about Elder Scrolls Online. I fucking skipped the whole part of the show. Nobody gives a fuck about Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, like I said earlier, I agree with that. I don't think there's really a lot of excitement surrounding the Elder Scrolls Online anymore. Even with all the DLCs being free, I still didn't see a whole lot of hype. And really, now that it's over and it's been a couple days, the main thing people are talking about is Hi-Fi Rush. So yeah, I don't think that's too outlandish to say. Now I will say this. The way they shot this, the format of it was much better than Inside Xbox or their Xbox Bethesda Showcase. Uh, they minimize the talking to you know as, as much as they could i think but i do enjoy the way that they put this together is a, a, a much more efficient to show the games they talk about it a little bit and just show the fucking games damn not gonna lie this guy's kind of on a roll he's giving them credit where credit's due you know maybe he's not so bad after all let's continue watching and see if he keeps the same energy it sure would be a shame if he were to dunk on hi-fi rush and say that oh you're hypocritical if you like it but don't like for spoken that would sure be a shame <laughs> Now let's talk about the highlight of the show, and that is going to be Xbox decided to do a stealth drop 
of a game called Hi-Fi Rush. That's right, Hi-Fi Rush. A game that looks like it could run the fucking PS2 on the world's most powerful console. They decided to stealth drop this. Why? Why do you think that is? Do you think maybe it was to avoid bad reviews? That's not how reviewing games works. Just because a game is dropped right after it's announced doesn't mean everybody loves it automatically. A game doesn't automatically get better reviews because it was dropped right after it was announced. So I don't know what kind of logic that is. And here we go, yet another pony argument. Oh, it's not super realistic on the world's most powerful console? Bad. How could Xbox do this? How could they make this game? Yes, dude, it's the world's most powerful console and that's how it's marketed. But that doesn't mean every game has to be photorealistic. Hell, before Hi-Fi Rush, they were showing off Forza Motorsport, which is basically the best looking game I think I've ever seen. But seriously, I don't get this argument. Just because the console is being marketed as being super powerful doesn't mean every game has to be photorealistic. That doesn't make any sense. That's like saying that because the PS5 banks off the SSD so much, that means every game has to load in under 10 seconds or else the PS5 is worthless. Which, funnily enough, I don't know if you guys saw this, but somebody actually tested the load times for Dead Space, and the Series S actually loads the game faster than the PS5. Oh, the irony. Or to hype their fan base up. Either way, it was still trash. They talked all week talking about tamper your expectations, keep your expectations low, and they really thought they had something here. They said, we're about to fucking drop this bomb on them. Just wait till they see Hi-Fi Rush. They really thought they did something. They really thought they fucking dropped the bomb. Ooh, stealth drop. They even said on their Twitter page, Mike, drop. The only thing you dropped Xbox is the fucking ball. But guess what? No, Xbox definitely did drop the mic with Hi-Fi Rush. They were saying all week, oh, temper your expectations. It's not going to be that exciting or anything. And they drop an absolute banger out of nowhere with no lead up whatsoever. And you can play it the very same day. That is a mic drop. But please keep crying. I'm loving the salt. You can hear the salt coming out of his mouth. But seriously, though, imagine arguing that them shadow dropping Hi-Fi Rush wasn't a big deal. The game is a ton of fun. And honestly, I really think they made the right call with announcing it and then releasing it like an hour after because if this was something they were gonna build up for several months or something i think people would have really not cared as much about it interest probably would have been pretty low by the time it came out and the game probably wouldn't have done too well in fact i was even thinking like okay this game looks kind of cool but i think i'm just gonna ignore it for the most part but then as soon as i heard they were dropping it like an hour or two after the developer direct i was like oh hell yeah i'm downloading that off game pass because if this game wasn't gonna come out for a couple months or something, I know I would have forgotten about it. But since it dropped so soon after they announced it, I was like, screw it. Why don't I just try it? It's on Game Pass and I'm kind of looking for some games to play anyway. And I ended up absolutely loving it. So yes, I would say that Xbox did drop the mic with that one. But at the same time, this dude's probably just salty that Microsoft already has a first party game out in the first month of the year. And he knows that Forspoken bombed and Spider-Man 2 isn't coming out until much later. And that's all Sony has this year. It's crazy it is, this game, Hi-Fi Rush, was enough to fucking solidify, was enough to keep Xbox fans at bay, was enough to fucking make them praise Xbox for a game like fucking Hi-Fi Rush from Bethesda and Tango Gameworks. I got a better idea. Instead of making this bullshit, I'm not, I'm not hating on the game. I played the game for about an hour and a half. It's a decent little rhythm game, but it, that game's not fucking it either. Yeah, guys, I'm not hating on the game. I'm just saying that Xbox dropped the ball and they really thought they had something even though they didn't. But I'm not hating on the game whatsoever. Like, dude, just shut up and own the fact that you're hating on this. You're probably mad that it's not on PlayStation. Or maybe you just hate it because Mugwafics. And also, I love how he calls it BS and then immediately says he's not hating. Like, yeah, okay, bro. And yes, dude, do you want to know why people are praising this game so much? And why people like Xbox again? It's because the game is good. And it's because it was awesome that they dropped it a couple hours after they announced it. That's why everybody's praising them. It was a really smart move. Just like how back when Apex Legends came out, everyone was praising Respawn because they announced a new game, immediately dropped it, and it was really good and a ton of people enjoyed it. Who knows? Now that this has worked so well for Xbox, maybe Sony might try it. Like I have said many times, I have no problems with games like fucking Hi-Fi Rush, even games like Pentiment. But when you're only when you're dropping games like that and only games like that alongside nothing else, no, no other big games, that's where it becomes a fucking problem, especially on the world's most powerful console, as they touted. Do you think I'm hype for a game like Hi-Fi Rush? Fuck no. 
Do you think people who pay $15 a month are hyped for a game like fucking Hi-Fi Rush? Fuck no. You know what we all would like to see more from Tango Gameworks? How about a fucking Evil Within 3? Now that would have been something. If they would announce an Evil Within 3 game, maybe even releasing that fucking night, bro. Yeah, it would have been nice if we got an Evil Within 3. But guess what? They made this game, and a ton of people love it. This is something I can't stand about PlayStation fanboys, is when they act like they're the voice of Xbox consumers. Saying, oh, nobody who owns Game Pass is excited for this game. Yeah, okay, bud, the 9.3 user score on Metacritic would beg to differ. And also, just because they release this smaller game, doesn't mean they also have to release a massive game alongside it. Especially after 2022 having no first-party games from Xbox, if they waited until the same time as like Redfall or Starfield or Forza to release this game, that would have probably been awful. Because one, those games would have overshadowed Hi-Fi. But at the same time, that's the entire year of 2022 without any first party games. Plus however many months it takes for these other games to come out. Hi-Fi Rush was supposed to be dropped right at the beginning of the year. After a long year of no first party games from Xbox. To send the message, hey, we're sorry about what happened last year. Here's a banger to start off off your year. Now get hyped for what we have coming in the future. Because guess what? If Bethesda is dropping a great game like Hi-Fi Rush, that probably gives people hope that Starfield and Redfall are going to be really good as well. Because it's the same company making them. The Evil Within 3 exclusive right now in a few hours on Game Pass. Now that shit would lay it on fire. But Hi-Fi Rush, and I'm, I know I'm going to get grilled for this shit, but Hi-Fi Rush, believe it or not, whether you want to believe this shit or not, is more Game Pass filler bullshit. Like I said, it might, might be a fun game, might be a fun little indie game in its own right. You know it's made by Bethesda, but still. Might be a fun little game in its own right, but it is not fucking it. It is Game Pass filler kitty art style bullshit. So now if a game has a cartoony art style, then it's automatically for kids. I mean, Jesus Christ. I guess Borderlands is for kids as well, right? Maybe High on Life as well? You know what? I have an idea. All preschools from now on should do High on Life playtime. Because that's a very kid-friendly game that I'm sure plenty of parents want their kids to be exposed to. But in all seriousness, yeah, you're right. You are going to get grilled for calling this game Game Pass Filler. Because this game was in development since 2017. Three years before Microsoft bought Bethesda. Bethesda. Whether or not Microsoft bought Bethesda, this game was going to come out. It just so happens that now it's going on Game Pass Day 1 because Microsoft owns it. It's not Game Pass filler because the devs probably didn't even know it was going to go on Game Pass at the time. Hell, Game Pass came out at what, like the end of 2017? So this game probably started development before Game Pass even came out. So yeah, not Game Pass filler. The developers even said so themselves. And all these frauds, all of you frauds are exposing yourself every day. How dare any of you say some shit like, oh, Forspoken looks like trash. The graphics of Forspoken look like trash. That combat looks like trash. But then you're hype as fuck for a game like Hi-Fi Rush. Hypocrisy of the highest order. How is that hypocritical at all? They have completely different combat systems, and the art styles are completely different. Forspoken is trying to look realistic, but when you can't see shadows on trees more than like 30 feet away, and the game's running at 720p on a PS5 in 2023, yeah, it looks like trash, because it's trying to look realistic and failing at it. Hi-Fi Rush, meanwhile, is trying to look super cartoony and is doing a great job of that. Hi Hi-Fi Rush gets praised for its art style because it actually looks good. Forspoken is trying to look super realistic, but the low resolutions, bad render distances, and the frame drops make it look really bad. So how exactly is it hypocritical to think one game looks good and plays good, but the other doesn't? This actually makes no sense. This dude is really mad that people don't like Forspoken, I guess. I'm not saying you can't enjoy Hi-Fi Rush. I'm not saying people can't enjoy Hi-Fi Rush. If you want people are going to sit there and say that the quality in Forspoken is shit and then praise a game like Hi-Fi Rush, you are a fucking fake, you are a fraud, and you are a fucking liar. And this whole thing goes deeper than just Hi-Fi Rush. 
So apparently, if you think Hi-Fi Rush looks better than Forspoken, then you're a liar. Yes, dude, the quality in Forspoken is garbage. Hi-Fi Rush actually runs above 900p. Forspoken does not unless you're limiting yourself to like 30 FPS. And even then, it drops to like 24 sometimes. If we're talking realistic graphics, then yes, obviously Forspoken looks better. But if we're talking art style, a lot of people agree that Hi-Fi Rush looks better. And if we're talking talking resolution, then of course Hi-Fi Rush looks better. Again, it actually runs above 900p. But my god, did you guys hear him when he said you're a effing liar? This man sounds like he's gritting his teeth so hard they're about to crack. Ever since Game Pass's inception in 2017, every game we've gotten since then has been low budget filler bullshit. Sea of Thieves, State of the K2, all these games low ass quality. Taking Premier Studios and turn them into this shit. You got Rare making games like Sea of Thieves. You got Obsidian making games like Grounded and Pentiment. Now you got Bethesda and Tango making fucking a game like Hi-Fi Rush. And since Game Pass Inception, it has affected their games at every level. Even the AAA games, even their biggest names. Look at the fucking state that Halo is in. None of these games suck because of Game Pass, they suck because of bad management. And plus, games like Sea of Thieves, those were in development for several years before Game Pass even came out. Hell, Sea of Thieves has only gotten better since Game Pass came out, so what does that tell you? Also, we've already seen a thousand times that Halo Infinite was extremely mismanaged, so that's not Game Pass's fault. But remember how I said earlier, oh, keep in mind, he said he was excited it was coming to Game Pass? Well, yeah, now he looks like a complete hypocrite, doesn't he? Because earlier he was saying, oh, I'm excited this game is coming to Game Pass, but now he's saying, oh, Game Pass is ruining everything. And again, Hi-Fi Rush is not low-budget filler garbage. Sure, it's not an insanely long game or anything. I think I beat it in like 12 hours or something. But just because a game isn't very long doesn't mean it's low-budget. A game can be great while having a simplistic art style. God, all these ponies want is mug graphics. Gears of War 5, or Gears 5 as they call it, should have been called Game Pass 5, because it fucking sucked. They lowered the bar so much for the Gears universe, both the multiplayer-wise and the story, and that game has never been right since, and they stopped supporting it. Game Pass is a goddamn curse, and it's bringing every game down. I've said it so many times, they're not putting any effort or money into these games, because why the fuck would they? Because whether they put out zero games or a hundred games, it's still $15 a month. They're getting their fucking money either way. Okay, but Gears 5 wasn't the only bad Gears game. Gears 4 also was not very good. And do you want to know why? It's the same reason that Halo became bad. The original developers stopped working on the game and it was given to new developers who didn't know what to do with it. Those games have been extremely mismanaged ever since. Think about it. Bungie made Halo Halo's 1, 2, 3, ODST, and Reach. Then what happened once 343 3 got them? Boom, it instantly got bad. Epic Games made the Gears games up until Gears 4. Then what happened? The games got bad. Those are not coincidences. And I don't think it's fair to say there's no money and no effort going in. You know, Gears 4 and 5, they may have not had the best campaigns or whatever, at least from a story perspective, but I could tell when I was playing the games there was effort put in. I feel like what happened to Gears is kind of what happened to Halo, where the games are good games, but not good Gears games. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. Please tell me if I'm completely wrong about that. But I've heard people say a lot before, like, oh, Halo 4 and 5, they weren't bad games. They were just bad Halo games. And I think the same could be said for Gears. They have zero incentive to fucking push more games out and push quality games out. No, all you're going to get now, Xbox community, quality wise, is games like Gravity or High Five fucking Rush. Is that why you bought Xbox Series X? For a game like Gravity Rush that runs, what, 4K fucking, you know, 120 frames per second and that art style, is that what the fuck you want to see? Or do you want to see your games be getting pushed forward, right? You want to power your dreams? That's what they tell you, right? Power your dreams. Good luck. Have fun. I mean, hey, if we're gonna get games of the same quality as Hi-Fi Rush in the future, I think Xbox is gonna be just fine. Because Hi-Fi Rush is a very high quality game. It feels good, it looks good, it runs good, and it's got a good story. I mean, what else can you really ask for? Make no mistake that this show just solidified. The Xbox don't give a fuck. And it solidified the direction that they're going with this low budget bullshit. There's no effort, low budget horseshit. And of course, their biggest game, Starfield, was nowhere to be found, and they say there's gonna be a whole show just dedicated to Starfield when it's supposed to drop in, what, in June, according to them. 
we'll see about that. Dude, where are you getting your information from? First, that, oh, Hi-Fi Rush is just Game Pass filler, even though it was in development before Game Pass even existed. And who the hell said that Starfield is coming out in June? Microsoft never said that. In fact, the recent leaks have suggested it's coming in March. But I saw a few people complaining, oh, there wasn't, like, any Gear 6 or Starfield or anything. Yeah, Microsoft said exactly what they were showing off at the event. Imagine if I went to watch a NASCAR race and then complained there weren't enough horses running around on the track. They said exactly what was going to be there, and people are still complaining that there wasn't any Starfield, even though they specified Starfield is getting its own direct, as this guy just admitted. Again, complaining for the sake of complaining. But no, no release date for Forza. No release date for Starfield. We got one for Redfall, Minecraft Legends, and you got a stealth drop of a fucking kitty game, High Fire Rush, that could have very well ran on a fucking PS2. That's just the way it looks. There is no W here for Xbox community. This is not a win. This is a gigantic L. This is a gigantic loss, a huge failure, and just a continuation of what Xbox has become and what people expect from Xbox. Yeah, because, you know, announcing an awesome game that's a lot like Sunset Overdrive, which people can't get the sequel to because Sony owns Insomniac, and then dropping it a couple hours after is definitely an L. Showing off more of Forza Motorsport is definitely an L. Finally getting a release date for Redfall is definitely an L. Sure, bud. Again, like I said earlier, I think he's just mad that Xbox has more games coming this year than PlayStation. Ah, uh, stay mad. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Basically, for the rest of his video, he just repeats himself and says oh hi-fi rush is low budget it's game pass filler you know all that stuff and i don't want to repeat my arguments anymore i think i've made it very clear why he's wrong but yeah basically what we learned today is if you don't like for spoken but you like hi-fi rush then you're a hypocrite because obviously the only thing that matters at the end of the day is mug graphics am i right but yeah anyway guys with that being said thank you all so much for watching like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't like it subscribe if you want to see more and i I will catch you all next time.